Brian. Thank you very kindly, audience, and uh, Buck Ryan has won, I think, many, many a national championship with that old-time fiddle number, the Orange Blossom Special. A lot of folks enjoy Don Reno's five-string banjo picking, but I, for one, kind of enjoy his guitar picking also, and for the next number, he's going to flat pick uh, with a straight pick rather than a three-finger pick. We're going to do a, give you a D, D, there you go. The wind is blowing through the trees and the instruments are going with it, I think. But uh, this features flat top guitar playing and uh, it's a duet Don and I enjoy singing. It's entitled The Country Ball Rock and Roll. I 
Don Reno, Bill Harrow, and the Tennessee Cut-Ups. That's fine. You've heard a little bit of lots of different kinds of song in bluegrass during this little half hour that we've had so far. Uh, a little bit of humor with the country boy rock and roll, some songs of religious nature, and some heart songs, and so forth. Uh, any of those of you look around very much, uh, you know that there's country music parks around here, all throughout Maryland having a lot of bluegrass festivals this summer and there's uh, quite a few left during the fall you should go out to see and there's also a couple of magazines too that deal in bluegrass music especially uh, bluegrass unlimited and mule skinner news and these uh, these fellows here rated let's see tops in about six different categories in a poll that they made i think they're the best band best vocalist best guitar player and so forth you see you're the best guitar player <laughs> Anyway, uh, with all the younger people playing uh, bluegrass music, it's kind of really enjoying a revival now. Uh, a lot of people playing all kinds of different music. And this is a band that pioneered in playing some of the more modern songs in the bluegrass style. The Country Gentleman. Give them a hand, would you? Let me introduce you here, so you know our names here, playing the bass fiddle from the state of Virginia, and uh, they've been with us a good while. We're very proud of Bill Yates on the bass. And on the five-string banjo from Bethesda, Maryland, Bill Emerson, and playing the little guitar, the mandolin from the state of Tennessee, Kingsport, Tennessee, Doyle Lawson on mandolin, and I'm from Louisiana, my name's Charlie Waller. This is a song we recorded some time back. It's called, Make Me a Pallet on Your Floor. Make 
satisfied If I could catch a train and ride If I reach Atlanta with no place to go Make me a pallet on your floor Make me a pallet on your like me. dedicate that to our bus. We don't have any beds built in it yet. Uh, this is a quartet number here that we've just That's recently, four of, us. four of us get to sing on this. Uh, we've just recently rearranged this a little bit and uh, I think you might enjoy it. It's called A Beautiful Life. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> Thank you. Beautiful life. This uh, next song is uh, one of the numbers that's been doing very well for us around the country. It's from our latest album. It's called The Legend of the Rebel Soldier. In a dreary Yankee prison where a rebel soldier lay by his side there stood a preacher ere his soul should pass away and he faintly whispered parson as he clutched him by the hand oh parson Tell me quickly, will my soul pass through the Southland? Will my soul pass through the Southland, through all Virginia Grand? Will I see the hills of Georgia? And the green fields of Alabama Will I see that little church house Where I pledge my heart in hand Oh, parson, tell me quickly Will my soul pass through the Southland? In this dreary cell I lie Was for loving dear old Dixie In this northern state I die Will you see my little daughter Will you make her understand Oh, Parson Tell me quickly, will my soul pass through the Southland? Then the rebel soldier died. Oh, thank you very much. This, uh, Next number is an instrumental here that Bill Emerson wrote, which is uh, also on the latest album. Oh, it's on the Sound Off album, excuse me. It's called Cowboys and Indians. A little haunting introduction. Thank you. 
Okay, that's the country, gentlemen. Join us, will you, over here, Bill? Sure will. Scoot over uh, pretty close to us here. I forgot to mention uh, at the beginning... Uh, yes. I forgot to uh, mention at the beginning, uh, before the country gentlemen played, uh, that they record for Vanguard, so you know where you can hear more of them if you'd like to. And, of course, many places around our area here they play, just like uh, uh, Don Reno, Bill Harrell, and also Dale McCurry. What we want to do here is to um, get a chance to talk, you know, because we all do talk once in a while, and give you a little bit more idea of some of the uh, things that have gone to make up our kind of music, our bluegrass music almost like a workshop on a folk festival. And uh, I think maybe we should start at the beginning. Um, I'd like to ask Don Reno, who was around uh, central, well, actually western North Carolina, at the time when bluegrass music, or actually before <coughs> bluegrass music got started, to ask him what kind of music was around in, in your background. Well, uh, Mike, we had uh, several groups around in the vicinity where I was raised. I was very lucky to uh, have uh, the Monroe Brothers, Charlie and Bill, the Blue Sky Boys, uh, Cliff and Bill Carlisle featured uh, real good uh, country music, and the Morris Brothers, who I think uh, were some of the greatest back in my youth. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, Byron Parker, the old hired hand with the Black Draft Hillbillies. Uh, what was the Black Draft Hillbillies about? Well, that was the original uh, uh, bunch of members of the old J.E. Mainers bunch. Mm -hmm. Happy Jenkins and Pappy Sherrill, uh, Handsome and Sam Bo Stokes, and they really had a terrific group together back then. So there's a lot of mandolin and guitar brother groups. Right. And a little bit of, uh, of Hawaiian music. Right. Yeah. And most were the songs that had been around, or were they making up new songs then? Well, uh, a lot of them were making up new songs, and a lot of them were singing the songs that had been around a long time. It was a very inventive period, I think, back then that I went through, and then uh, in the 50s, we had another inventive period, I think, that started. And now I think we've got another inventive period starting, because I see the new groups playing. Uh, they're really playing, Mike. Mm -hmm. They're really doing great. You know, uh, I'm proud to see the younger musicians picking it up and really putting that old zing in there and uh, trying to come up with something new and they are doing it yeah they really are and that's that's more of the the area that uh that the country gentlemen are in well actually right. yourself too i really like that but they're still uh, they've still got the flavor of the uh old tradition you know they've still got the good foundation but uh, they're just uh putting a little more frosting on the cake here in yonder you might say bill emerson where are you from originally i was born in washington dc mike how'd you get interested in the bluegrass uh, one morning, uh, when I was uh, very young, about 12 years old, I think, uh, I got up and turned on my radio, and lo and behold, there it was. And uh, I was stuck after that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when did you start playing the more modern tunes? You made up that Cowboys and Indians, didn't you? Yes, yeah, that's, that's one of my tunes. How long ago was that? Uh, I did that about uh, two years ago. But I like to say that uh, when I started playing, it was in the 50s, uh, the early, uh, mid-50s, I'd say. And uh, fellas like uh, Don Reno here was, uh, were great inspirations to me. Uh, if it hadn't been for, for Don and some of the others, I'd probably never, never played a banjo. And another thing, it probably is an inspiration to some of the older time musicians when the younger people pick up after them and, and develop it, I, sure I would sure. guess. Sure, nothing makes you feel better than hearing somebody play one of your tunes. <laughs> <laughs> well... Dale, what do you want to say for yourself here? I have an idea what I'd like to do here, but... <laughs> I don't know. Ask me a question. <laughs> we know where you're from. You're from Carolina, aren't you? Originally, yeah. That's yeah. Right. And you live in Pennsylvania? Right. And uh, like Bill, I've I become interested in bluegrass first off, you know. I heard old-time music. Uh, my uncles in uh, North Carolina, they played... The old style banjo and fiddle, you know, just the banjo and fiddle. But I never actually got to hear them that much, you know. And what got me interested, uh, my brother used to turn the Grand Ole Opry on and, and uh, get Bill Monroe. And of course, at that time, maybe Don was playing with him, you know. Mm -hmm. And then later on, Don and Red Smiley on Richmond, we listened to them. And that was about the only thing we had to listen to as far as good bluegrass music, you know. Yeah. Well, I 
guess that bluegrass music has continued. Do you think that the festivals are helping it or? Absolutely, I think uh, that it's, now it's greater and bigger than it's ever been. Uh, there's more festivals. I think Bluegrass Unlimited came along and that helped a lot. Carlton Haney has started the festivals and uh, it, they just brought bluegrass to more people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I feel like we're sort of in a musical renaissance these days anyway. Everybody yes. Liking yeah, all true. kind of different music, you know, and, and younger people, they, they want to know about all kind of music. And, and bluegrass is a, is a good form of, of American folk music. That's for sure. And uh, everybody likes it, and it's, it's becoming more popular every day. Well said. You know what I'd like to, uh, let's see. The, sometimes I figure that uh, I would really like to hear a whole show sometimes of of uh, bluegrass music. I go to festivals quite a bit, as you all probably have hit a festival every weekend, haven't you, this uh, summer? But I remember those days up at the parks, New River Ranch and Sunset Park, where uh, Don Reno and, and the late uh, Red Smiley would uh, come up with the, the group that they had, and they'd do two or three shows, and they'd have a chance to get into a lot of music that you can't get into the, in the festivals sometimes anymore, Right. it seems. I wonder why that is. Well, you just don't have time, Mike. There's so many groups there playing, and uh, uh, another thing that I'm proud to see are the college uh, students, how well they're taken to it. In other words, it's like uh, me and you, when we started the school, was very interested in uh, uh, history like uh, the father of our country, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and, and they are wanting to find out where this stuff originated from, mm -hmm. and it is their music when they come to find out. It started right here mm -hmm. in America. It's American music. Absolutely. Comes from the heart, sincerity, and with a lot of feeling. And that's what people are looking for today. There's some comedy in it, too, and I remember <laughs> those old comedy skits that you used well, to Well, slightly on. used to be a little bit now and then, yes, we did. <laughs> do you ever do those anymore? Uh, once in a while. <laughs> See the man uh, out there is uh, motion for you. I better draw your attention. Hang this on. is a chicken hot rod here, actually, sometimes. <laughs> well, you know what I'd like to try to do here before we end? We have time for a couple more tunes. I'd like uh, for you, Don, and your group to uh, kind of build a bluegrass band, show people how each instrument sounds, all right. and then put it all together. Okay. Uh, see, the old time music was maybe just a person sitting around singing. Don? All right, if you're ready, Mike. Back when I was just a little bitty boy, I remember some of the old square dance uh, that they used to have when I was a little boy. All you would hear sometimes out of them would be a fiddle, which sounded something like this. <laughs> then a little bit later on, uh, somebody put a five string with it, and it kind of gave it a little more value. Finally, they uh, added a six-string flat-top guitar. Then as time went on, <clears throat> somebody said, why don't we play a mandolin with the group? So mandolins was kind of joined in with it, which gave it a little more bounce to the ounce, and here's the way it sounded with a mandolin. <laughs> Then finally the old dog house come in and there you have a rounded out bluegrass group. All right. <laughs> okay, there's a that was a fine job of history there, Don. I wish we had more time to spend with this, but I think uh well, how about that? Man's out there putting fingers up there, and he's has seven. Why don't you all do another song? We have time well, for another whole you. song before we do that <laughs> jam session. I thought that was a sawmiller ordering two soft drinks there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, by the time we get all these groups in here, uh, in other words, I've really enjoyed the show yes, here sir. today. Uh, Dale McCurry and the Dixie Pals, a wonderful group, and, of course, the country gentlemen one of the finest groups in the country. And when you get with Mike Seeger, I think Mike has put more things together than any one man in the country. He's been a, an underground worker, never really received the uh, 
Pat's on the back that he's due. Mike, I think you've done a great job uh, in organizing a lot of things and helping a lot of people, really. Thank you, Don. And uh, really, the joy in life is given, not receiving. You know that? And every once in a while at the festivals, we all get together with banjos and uh, twin fiddles, play uh, two banjos and twin fiddles, and That's just a have idea. a wonderful time. And everybody gets in the act, and uh, it just feels wonderful to have the whole group together. So, boys, let's all come in and uh, do a like little bit of the Lost and Road Blues and sign out with it, okay? Okay, and this will be the end of our little program on bluegrass music, uh, part of grassroots music in Maryland with Don Reno, Bill Harrell, the Tennessee Cut-Ups, the country gentleman, and also, oh, I forgot to give you your mandolin back, Del McCurry and the Dixie Pals. Okay, let's go. For a little bit more, why don't you go ahead and do another one like that? That sounded so fine. How about John Henry? John Henry, John Henry the steel driving man. Yeah. 